question and two winners. Can someone uh, give me another uh, resources of ocean resources that provides a lot of bioactive, except the seaweed, fish, and microalgae or sea cucumber? Okay. Uh, mangrove or sponge? Is it correct? Yes, correct. Yay, congratulations. What is your name, sir? What is your name? Dewa. Mas oh, Dewa. Bogor Agricultural University. Oh, I see. Okay, we have another quiz. Another one? Just one more. I want, uh, can someone share the idea about the future food? I mean, what imagination that you have about the, our future food. Future anyone? food. Okay, anyone who can answer? Okay, the gentleman with the white shirt. Is it like an example of the product or what? Uh, the yeah, what? Yes, yes, yes. In my, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, your um, imagination about it. It would be a serum contained with nutrients from, from superfood from the ocean, something like that. It's serum that could consumed by human by injected it or by just eat it orally. Thank you. Okay, okay your name? Andi Tiar Suaji from Indonesia Defense University. Oh, Defense University. Okay, I would like to invite uh, Mas Dewa and Mas Aditya to join us on the stage. Congratulations, our winners today. You will receive a very interesting prize. Okay, and once more. And photo session in the center of the stage, please. Okay, big applause for all of them. Yay. Thank you. Please have a seat, Miss Effie. Now we will have a Q&A session. And don't forget our online viewers also have the opportunity to ask questions via comment box of our streaming video. So audience, if you have a question to Miss Evie, please raise your hand and okay, lady with the black hijab in the front row. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Siti, I'm from Econusa and thank you for your presentations. Uh, I want to ask um, whether the future food that you already present in your presentations is better than uh, our food from, uh, I mean, original food that we taken from the natural resource directly. And then uh, because I imagine in the future our next generation, uh, our next generation will consume the uh, future food, a uh, future food uh, product, and really depend on industry. And I mean, they will, uh, they will don't know how to um, take the food from original resource. I think um, it's uh, also the. I mean the like the eco labeling that you said, and also the genet genetically modified food. It means that we really depend on this industry, and uh, is it good for us? Thank you. Thank you for your question. This is also uh, similar with my question: How safe is functional food to our body? Okay, Miss Evie, you may answer the question. Thank you for the question. Uh, our future food compared to the conventional one. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it will be, uh, as I uh, mentioned about the um, population, and of course the population and how the resources can provide the food to meet the uh, the the number of the food that we need to consume, I think it's just use the conventional one. It's not uh, it 
it doesn't meet the food security goals. It needs to be uh, um, exploring and uh, by product producing a new uh, product of uh, um, future oh no, future food. And of course, um, the future food uh, that uh, produced by technology or industry, it will uh, reducing uh, waste food in our uh, system also. That I think it's not a bad, uh, it's not bad. I, I mean, it's good to, uh, I didn't say that uh, the the conventional one is not good, but a new product of uh, that obtained from the new technology is also um, very good because the product in future I think it will uh, specify by the nutrients inside. So uh, the inventor need to calculate all that. Uh, uh, body meat, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, in the, in the acceptable amount of our body, so it's not a waste. It's not become a waste product. Thanks. More comment? Uh, but what about our next generation? It means that we are really depend on industry. I mean, for example, that. Uh, maybe uh, for the next uh, future, in the future, that we eat fish in the can and we feed, we eat uh, the serum, or we maybe we eat food. Um, uh, it's like maybe pills. Uh, it means that human is uh, no longer uh, know how to maybe they hunt hunting or maybe they have to um, fishing, something like that. Do you also consider those things? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you want to produce, if you want to obtain the uh, future food, it means that conventional food still exists. It doesn't mean that it will be, uh, it will be gone like that, no? I mean, it still exists because uh, the future food means um, the food can be uh, value added by its nutri nutrition and also by uh, its price also. So it means that like like fishermen, they can uh, they do they uh, part fishing still uh, still exists. Now, because we need also not the, um, I mean, the aquaculture product also good, but not all the organism can be uh, farming to, uh, not all uh, sea organism can be farmed. So sometimes we need uh, the, like tuna, you can get it from the uh, deep sea. Uh, so it doesn't mean that uh, fishing is not, uh, still exists for the future, but uh, in um, we get a new step that's producing a new food with uh, I mean with the acceptable uh, nutrition that uh, our body needs. So doesn't mean that uh, conventional food is gone. No, it still exists. To, um, of course, it's uh, to to support the new future product also. Yeah, I think it's all matter of time because uh, this functional food is still on process as our future food. So it's like Evie mentioned before, she said about the three D food that edible, isn't it? So anyone here have a watch the Good Doctor in Hollywood fashion? The Good Doctor, not in Korean drama, but in Hollywood version, is a Freddie Highmore. In one episode, the the Good Doctor series mentioned about the bone created by 3D print. So they can manage to put the 3D bones to the the patient's leg, so it will help the patient to 
not not get the option of amputation. So I think there's still a bright future for our future food, in my opinion. And also we have a question from online viewers. It's from Amor 0707 Hi Amor. A very interesting lecture about future food. I have a queries one, which marine organism is the best future foods? And second question, how to improve the awareness of marine food consumption in Indonesia? The first question, hi Amor, Amor. Amor. <laughs> Uh, to pick the one, uh, the best one of uh, ocean resources to be uh, uh, functional, to be a, a functional food, I think are quite difficult because, as I mentioned before, um, one species have they have uh, their own specialty in uh, their bioactives. So it complete uh, each other. So we cannot say the green seaweed is more, uh, the more, uh, the, the best one to apply for nutraceutical, no, because brown seaweed also, they have, uh, they have a bioactive that couldn't found in green seaweed. So, each uh, species they have their own specialty in uh, bioactive. Their bioactives. And the second one. Second question. How, How to improve, improve the awareness of marine food consumption in Indonesia? Yeah, it start from our. Uh, it start from our ourself. Um, for me, I'm used to eat uh, marine, uh, marine food. Uh, maybe in some restaurant now, nowadays, we can find like a seaweed salad in sushi restaurant. Uh, but for the future, I, I imagine that in like Pizza Hut, they provide also the salad, not just fruit salad, but also like uh, uh, seaweed salad, and also use the the seaweed uh, from Indonesia, as we know in some restaurant, sushi restaurant, they use like wakame or uh, wakame and kind of uh, kombu. It. Uh, obtained in Japan, but hopefully, and for the next uh, future, next next uh, year, uh, Indonesian seaweed can be found also as uh, as a favorite dish in uh, rest our uh, restaurant in some restaurants. Okay, <laughs> technical errors. <laughs> okay. Uh, the I want to give you an example. I eat I eat the uh, kombu. I eat um, um, uh, nori and also uh, la ja sakarina japonica, and it has a good taste. But in Indonesia, I try to eat kaulerpa. Have you ever heard about that? Was it kaulerpa? Sigrep. It's kind of seaweed. It's a sea grape. It because it called sea grape because uh, the yeah it like a balls yeah. like a grapes. Um, it also uh, tastes delicious to be uh, and very good to um, to make as a salad. So if you guys. Uh, Found it. I mean, uh, in but just special uh, region area in our in, in Indonesia that consume that uh, seaweed. So when you are uh, going somewhere in another area, try to eat the local marine uh, sources, the marine food.
from uh, that local area that will be improved uh, in consuming our uh, ocean sources. Okay, cintailah produk-produk Indonesia. <laughs> Love our uh, food from Indonesia. Okay, another question. Uh, the gentleman with the green and white stripe batik. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Ibu Evi and the moderator. I'm sorry, I miss your name, ma'am. I'm Rinto from PU, Podomoro University. Rinto. So, actually, since I was kids, uh, everybody, including the government, uh, most of the people uh, always amazing us to planting the trees. Mm -hmm. So one of the collaboration that we could do at the time up to date is planting trees. Uh, today, it's very interesting, you know, we talk about the oceanography. So we have to save the sea, the ocean. Uh, since I think most of us living on ground, not above the sea, uh, what can we contribute to help the sea uh, because research is research without practicing it will be nothing mm. so i think there will be some outcome from this session uh, ex especially from the expert the researchers uh, so we we are as the public we would like to assist how to save this earth <coughs> and then I had ever met some nutritionists and they said it is good for our diet to eat the trunk and the leaves. So since today, when we are talking about the future food, uh, mostly the presentation material talking about eating seas and all the resources from the ocean. Uh, is there any health practitioner here? I, I, I just want to know, is it good for our body if we eat at all times uh, those fish. Uh, in the other side, some study said that there are a lot of heavy metal uh, under the sea. Uh, from the presentation material, uh, all the presentation, all the slides talking about the positive way of the ocean, including the fish, uh, but like Buyat, uh, the Buyat Bay, uh, there are some tragedy over there, Minamata tragedy also. And since these days are the massive industry, industri industrialization, uh, I think nobody can guarantee that the sea is safe for us. Uh, so from the research point of view, uh, what can we do? And when you are talk, there are some question about uh, from the YouTube, from the online streaming. Yeah, uh, how could we guarantee the safe, the safe food from this ocean? And mostly, Ibu, Ibu Evi or Eva, Ibu Evi mentioned that most of the food coming from the restaurant. I'm sorry, I'm public. I mostly I buy the fish from the traditional market, from the bank of the, of the coastal area. Uh, so. It will be difficult for me to eat every single day in the restaurant. It will costly, you know, because uh, not every people cook in daily life eating in restaurant. So I think uh, this is just a discussion. Uh, uh, all the question is not to Ibu F. But if there are some practitioner or anybody who could contribute to this floor, it will be okay for me. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Sorry, what was your name again? Sorry? Rinto. Rinto, okay. Uh, the first question, uh, what can we do to support the sustainable of our ocean resources? Because we are not directly attacked to the ocean, right? We did... Uh, when you live in city, it means that you didn't contact directly to the ocean, but um, 
Ocean contact you, uh, connect to you by like uh, the product. You can find it in the market also. You consume it uh, also. And by consuming this uh, uh, marine product, it means that you support the sustainable of the uh, ocean also. And how, uh, how uh, the, the simple, this another simple sim, uh, simple act is uh, when you are going to um, even in city or uh, you are going to a recreation place like beach or uh, yeah the, the water uh, spot um, please just not to um, just not to make our ocean as uh, trash bin because when I see in Lombok, when people, yeah, many tourists come from uh, Indonesia, uh, uh, national tourists or international tourists, they come uh, to the Lombok, they uh, forget sometimes that they bring many things for recreation. recreation uh, they leave the uh, they leave the um, the ways in that ocean, and I think it's a simple act, the simple action to to uh, for us uh, to uh, protect our ocean also. So it's not yeah, uh, that's a simple action, and I think uh, that's a general. Uh, it's a general one that can uh, we do for the ocean. And the last question is uh, about the second. Two more. Two more? Heavy metal. Heavy metal. That's the point, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, eating fish is good, but as I say, for uh, like too much consuming something, also it's not good for our health. Yeah, uh, I campaign to eat uh, to eat many resources of uh, ocean uh, product means that we can eat um, in a acceptable amount. I mean, because nowadays, uh, when I was in Korea, almost every day I eat seaweed. And I think it's very good. Uh, it gives uh, energy for me. I mean, when I come back to Indonesia and my uh, my food, uh, yeah, there, there's a changing uh, a diet food for me, and I can feel the differences between like when you consume the seaweed every day, I mean, almost every day, uh, but of course, it's not like in one day you eat like <laughs> how many kilos now? I mean, in acceptable amount uh, every day, it will be good for our health. Well, and also like, uh, like uh, om omega three. I mean, uh, EPA and DHA. They are also uh, have a regulation about uh, the amount that body needs to uh, to accept the uh, DHA and EPA. So, the uh, the big number doesn't mean that will give you a big impact to our health. I mean, in an acceptable amount of uh, product, a uh, seaweed, um, ocean product can give uh, a good benefit. 
and then another one like heavy metal. Uh, yeah, this uh, one of uh, this one of uh, one of uh, one of action also to sustain uh, to make our ocean resources sustain. So we need to know our seafood. We need to know the trace. It can be trace, uh, traceable. Also, it. Um, that's why nowadays the eco labeling product is getting famous. It the uh, the eco labeling product uh, show that this uh, fish or this uh, marine uh, marine um, material can be uh, uh, can be um tra tra uh, it's traceable and also uh, producing an uh, um, safe way to uh, ocean uh, sustainability so we need to know it, it's important to know that uh, how our <laughs> seafood so uh, the how the uh, the product uh, catch uh, or obtain from uh, the uh, ocean. Yeah, I think I do agree with you, Evie, about balancing balancing our diet, especially for us who live in Jakarta, with traffic, etc., stress and pollution. Consume uh, ginseng back uh, back time and i think my body feels more and You mentioned about the cosmetic thingy about the from the sea etc it's a good question I mean um, it reminds me that I have I was working in uh, one company in a food company in Indonesia I was working in uh, Kobe I think you got, some of you know about this uh, Bumbu Kobe, <laughs> it's not a promotion. Yeah, I was working in uh, research and uh, development uh, product. Uh, yeah, um, but as a researcher, uh, nowadays, uh, it's kind of uh, difficult to, I mean, in Indonesia, uh, there is, how can I say, um, not regulation, um, like research just uh, have their own path, industry also uh, has their own path. So we are uh, working together but we are not uh, pointing in one, uh, one, uh, one, uh, not one, direction. Uh, one direction, I mean we are still now government is uh, trying to be uh, more attachable to uh, industry so when i was working in uh, kobe i get many samples kind uh, for example like um, fish uh, powder and like uh, uh, Shell, cell, shell powder, and but uh, unfortunately, all that product is not from our country. is distributed from uh, uh, Philippines, uh, in Japan, and yeah, that's kind. Of, uh, so it's very sad because I couldn't find uh, any product uh, producing in Indonesia. So that's why. Uh, now, I think the time that 
uh, researcher need to do a collaboration uh, with the uh, industry, then this can make improvement uh, to our uh, economy also and all. And for the, uh, especially in marine product, so we, we are not just selling the raw material, but we produce in here and then we process in here, then we can sell the uh, fel the value added in uh, other country. It will make a big contribution to our economy also. Thank you for your answer. Okay, another question from the lady with the purple dress. Thank you. Uh, my name is Johanna. I'm a teacher from Sekolah uh, Menengah Cikalangri. Uh, I'm in interested with this uh, master class series because uh, I'm teaching environmental uh, system and society, so it suits my uh, interest and also uh, background. I'm from uh, IPB Chemistry. So uh, I am interested to know uh, how much is the processing system that is applied to the uh, to the uh, materials taken from the food will uh, influence the presence of the bioactive materials because uh, as I know that uh, bioactive materials uh, somehow can be broken by heat and pressure so I I really would like to know about that that's the first one the second one is um, nowadays we know that chlorophyll is also uh, somehow uh, famous <laughs> as uh, another alternative for health. So as we know that uh, microalgae, algae, also and also seaweed are the sources of the chlorophyll. So I would just like to know maybe there is uh, another data that compare about the chlorophyll uh, in terms of quality and quantity uh, from the, the ocean, yeah, such as, as microalgae, algae, and uh, seaweed, compared to the terrestrial leaves, mm. regarding to the gentleman question. Mm. The third one, uh, I'm also teaching my students uh, about the richness that are still somehow uh, covered, I mean, we didn't really dig out uh, the whole things uh, about microorganisms. So, would you mind sharing also uh, the somehow what kind of richness that we have found in ocean related to microorganisms other than microalgae? Thank you. Thank you, Ibu Johanna. Um, first question is about the processing for the uh, bioactives. Actually, uh, yes, it needs um, a higher technology to recover the bioactives material. So, because it's really easy, uh, broke by uh, lightness, lighting, or uh, the heating also heating process and the uh, based on the uh, my work I use like a con conventional method and also the new technology in extracting bioactive the conventional we are using just like uh, salt plate extraction by using um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, how can I say the like alcohol uh, I mean like hexane uh, solution uh, chemical solution and another uh, technology that very very uh, interesting is um, supercritical carbon dioxide uh, it's a very good uh, technology to uh, recover the bioactives because uh, 
they uh, we we use it uh, without any uh, solvent. We use the uh, carbon dioxide, but in a liquid uh, phase. And also, the sample extracted is uh, uh, have been checked that uh, the composition, the bioactive composition, is very uh, in a uh, good. I mean, no, the in a huge uh, number comparing to uh, conventional. Uh, methods. So, but the cost is uh, it needs a big cost to uh, get that uh, super critical machine. But until uh, this day, they mentioned that super critical is the best way to extract uh, the bioactives. And I hope it. Doesn't matter because I'm really interested in, in this case, uh, such as for example, sea, sea cucumber. Uh, nowadays we find the extract of sea cucumber, uh, and it's somehow sold commercially, right? So I'm wondering whether actually uh, the natural express sea cucumber is somehow better because of the bioprocess. I mean because doesn't have to go through the process or somehow the extract of the sea cucumber which is sold commercially is also the same quality that's that's the case for example Sorry, can you can you okay so uh, just now you explain about what what kind of methods that you use in your research for uh, isolating the bioactive substances right but what my concern is somehow related to the fertility question, but maybe I want to somehow make it sharper uh, in terms of uh, so that we can learn from this. Just uh, now in your slide, you showed us a, a lot of commercial, you know, uh, food products from the ocean that are sold commercially. So what I'm thinking is that. Uh, is it somehow uh, the processed food somehow have lower quality in terms of the natural food because of that the the, the fact that uh, bioactive substances are somehow uh, fragile to heat and pressure. Meanwhile, for the commercial. Uh, it should go through under heat and pressure, right? So, I mean, of course, the the processing uh, pro the processing system that is done by research and commercial uh, industry will be different. That's what I have, what I thought. So, my example is the sea cucumber and the extract of sea cucumber. I mean, do they have the same quality in terms of the bioactive? Thank you. Uh, nowadays, uh, like bio, I mean, supercritical, in especially in, um, in another country, it's not Indonesia. Uh, they use supercritical to uh, get the bioactive. So, uh, if we really want to get the high quality of bioactives, then we need to choose the best technology, the best method to uh, uh, providing it, to provide that uh, material. So uh, when you are, uh, when you are, when you want to, for example, like uh, carotene, I want to, uh, Carotin can be exist in my product, so where I will I cannot use like heating or a lighting to make my product. I think um, the method uh, we are um, we need to concern about the method. So we need to protect uh, the our our bioactives uh, so that it cannot be easily re uh, regarded uh, uh, retarded by uh, 
the by the lighting or the heating. So um, that's why when you produce a high quality product of bioactives, the cost is getting higher also because of the technology. So it depends the, to the technology used for uh, extracting the bioactives. And how a comparison uh, the chlorophyll in algae and into the terrestrial um, product. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can find uh, some bioactives in terrestrial um, sources. Uh, can be found also in uh, um, ocean sources. Uh, for example, like uh, chlorophyll, we can find uh, in. Um, spirulina, microalgae, and algae, or uh, in um, seagrass also, and chlorophyll can be uh, obtained uh, in another uh, um, raw material, such as yeah, in spinach, they have a chlorophyll also, and especially the green uh, terrestrial uh, plant. The, the the green plan, but I think yeah, in, uh, I think there there gonna be a different um, different number, the different amount of uh, this bioactive in each um, raw material. So uh, I didn't compare. I never doing the comparison uh, before because. I never, uh, I didn't do like uh, extracting in uh, terrestrial or uh, material. Uh, 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 what I'm doing is just comparing the seaweed to my uh, seaweed and microalgae or um, seaweed uh, fucoidan to the uh, sea cucumber fucoidan kind of that. So, but I think it will be uh, different. And also, uh, sometimes. You cannot substitute uh, the bioactives from um, ocean and into the terrestrial. Sometimes in ocean we can find the bioactive, bioactive from the land, and sometimes bioactive from the land we can find in ocean resources. So they have different uh, bioactives uh, composition also. So yeah, if we want to uh, compare. Then we need to um, get more info from uh, the more uh, research uh, study uh, about uh, comparison that's bioactives. Thank you. It's interesting. Uh, somehow, uh, in in my mind, I imagine it gets more interesting because uh, either the uh, the leaves that come from the plants and also uh, microalgae, algae, uh, spirulina, and then uh, sea grasses are all the uh, producers. So uh, I think the quantity of the chlorophyll probably in the ecosystem will relate to uh, the somehow uh, the core function of the producer as to produce the oxygen either for the terrestrial or for the ocean. So uh, I think uh, it somehow can also relate to how much they will benefit the whole ecosystem. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another question? Another one. Another one. Oh, yes. Another one. Sorry. Microorganism, right? Uh, and uh, for example, uh, nowadays, uh, the study uh, of the study show that uh, scientists is exploring what kind of bacteria then get, uh, could give uh, health benefit for digesting. So, for example, in RCO Lippi, uh, there is a researcher that now uh, isolating a good bacteria to our body. That's kind of an an uh, kind. Of an example uh, to show the uh, kind of microorganism that could be uh, used for our health. 
kind of bacteria that can provide um, a benefit, for example, like uh, to make uh, rapidly digesting in our body, but, but still uh, going, so we don't know yet about the uh, result. Okay, another question. Uh, lady with the brown, brown in the left, my left, yeah, yeah, you. Brown hijab with the glasses. Hi, my name is Dia from P2O. Uh, I agree with you that oceans is our future. Maybe 2050, our food comes from our oceans. So. What kind of research that you have or will be developed in your department to provide our food, our food or nutraceutical product? And the second one, uh, you mentioned that microalgae such as spirulina and chlorella will be a future food. But as I know, that microalgae have a doses, maybe one until two grams per day. So what the impact if we consume that more than the doses? Uh, whereas, in my mind, it, it is natural product, so I think there is no impact if we consume uh, more than doses. Thank you. Thank you, dear. And, uh, what the uh, kind of product that I develop. Yeah, for the first question, yeah. Now, uh, um, me and my uh, colleague, uh, we are uh, doing uh, my um, microalgae, uh, microalgae, sea cucumber, and seaweed, um, and seaweed, uh, bioactive material, we are trying to uh, develop a new, I mean, not a new, I mean, we are checking the bioactive material from uh, this, those kind of um, uh, raw, raw resources. And still, uh, we have uh, checked maybe around 15 species of uh, microalgae that has uh, that have been cultured in RCO, yeah, and uh, the research is still going because we just starting. And for the sea cucumber, uh, we have uh, checked uh, one uh, species. Uh, it's um, Holotria atra, uh -huh. and another one we are gonna compare to the Holotria scabra that. Uh, already uh, farming in uh, Lombok, so we want to uh, know the bioactives comparing to the uh, the uh, the sea cucumber from uh, catching directly from the uh, ocean. And uh, for seaweed, we are uh, still uh, working to make uh, like jelly, 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 seaweed jelly. Yeah, like. Uh, Candies, kind of candies, but that. And now, so second question the, about the dosage of uh, microalgae consumption. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, when you have uh, too much uh, dosage about one product, it's not gonna be. Uh, make a uh, harmful to our body, but it's a waste. Like our body just need, uh, for example, our body just uh, need maybe uh, 0 0.5 EPA, but we need, uh, we consume uh, like five, five, uh, five gram of EPA, then the, uh, the body will get, uh, will, will, will uh, use the 0 0.5 and the less of that uh, amount will be uh, waste. It will be, uh, it's not useful to our body. But sometimes like uh, some uh, bioactives 
for example, like vitamin E, if we uh, too much consumption of uh, vitamin E will be, um, I, I have read uh, the uh, research that can be a uh, toxin to our body also. So uh, it depends to the bioactives. Okay, okay now. I'm just wondering about how far the implementation of sustainable and environmental mental friendly Okay. Uh, right now, uh, I think it's getting uh, better, and the implementation of the aquaculture in Indonesia, um, especially in our uh, in our uh, division, we are trying to develop uh, the invertebrate that that are very, very uh, uh, useful for our body and also uh, it's a very expensive one in market. So I think, and nowadays it's getting better and sometimes it's difficult to uh, farming a species of um, the organism because yeah, a lot of uh, factors uh, affect like we need to know how the the habitat also we need to make the habitat in laboratory same as uh, in uh, uh, ocean that's why sometimes it uh, makes it uh, difficult but the implementation of aquaculture now is uh, getting uh, uh, getting uh, increasing uh, especially to produce uh, new uh, organism that uh, very popular in market uh, and now now uh, now uh, maybe last year uh, there is a investor uh, is uh, interesting in to invest uh, to invest that aquaculture uh, business in Lombok so we are uh, now uh, doing the collaboration to that investor so I think it's getting uh, increasing mm. the, uh, by this year. And one more from online question. How to balance our food needs from ocean but, but still conserve the biodiversity? Example, seaweeds are cultivated but just certain species based on market demand. Is it possible to make other species extinct? Uh, how to maintain uh, the okay. this is question from Retno Suryandari. Hello, Retno. Balance our food needs. Okay. Uh, for example, um, if there is a policies that uh, told us not to stop eating the turtle eggs uh, yeah, sea turtle eggs sea turtle. then please stop because we need to be brave uh, once I uh, when I was in in Lombok there are a lot of uh, marine uh, resources can be provided uh, that I couldn't find in a market in uh, Jakarta uh, once I was uh, um, given the sea turtle eggs, then I know I know that it's uh, uh, prohibited by our government. Then I say no, and I I I talk also. I say say like I think it's not good. I mean, um, it's um, it's there's a regulation that we cannot eat that. 
anymore. So it, uh, that's kind of example that we need to be, uh, we need to support the regulation of uh, uh, the, uh, the policies that uh, support the sustainable of uh, ocean resources. That's just one example uh, and I uh, have uh, before. So we can eat, uh, we choose what we eat. We need to be uh, smart in uh, picking what we eat. That's uh, from the ocean. So even they say that uh, maybe a lot of uh, bioactives uh, getting from the eggs, but I think we are smart, then we know uh, we can find another substitute uh, bioactives to uh, uh, the substitute, yeah, the, to substitute what we get from the uh, the prohibited uh, resources. That's for that question. And another question is okay. Enough for online question. I would like to open very last question from our audience. Okay, the lady with the black in my left side, yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Upi from IBC Corporate University. I would like to ask about the bioactive itself. Is there any simple ways for us as the, uh, as the, uh, small enterprises uh, such as uh, small enterprises to produce uh, any uh, simple product uh, for a business a small scale business from the bioactive in from the marine uh, marine animals or any plants animal uh, from oceans itself is there any uh, method simple method that we can use to produce but in the home scale base perhaps or any small scale base, uh, is there anything from LIPI that could share to us to, for uh, especially the method itself? Thank you uh, for the question. Uh, for the home uh, industry, I think um, as I mentioned, if you want to get a high quality bioactives, then you need the technology. Uh, but uh, for example, for it's uh, for the home industry, when we have like raw uh, material, like um, silicon, for example, we can make it like uh, silicon powder. It's simple to make with powder and we can apply it like to make like a biscuit or a, uh, like yes biscuit or candies or a syrup or uh, the the simple uh, food the simple process of food that's I think I suggest to make first to make it like uh, uh, powder and then we can uh, apply that powder and into many uh, kind of uh, food product. That's And it means that when we have the powder, the uh, bioactives also s uh, still exist in that uh, uh, powder. That's Thank you. Thank you. Okay, unfortunately our time zip is up. Please give big applause to Miss Amy. Thank you so much, Amy, for your presentation. And to, all, to end our session, once again, I would like to invite Miss Corey on the stage to hand in the placards to Miss Evie.